The Giants have landed themselves another young stud pass rusher in Brian Burns by trading and signing for him from the Carolina Panthers. There's no doubt about it, since entering the league, Brian Burns has been one of the most consistent edge rushers in the NFL, averaging just under 10 sacks a season, as well as having 25 to 30 pressures per year. So what, is, what makes Brian Burns so special? Why is he deserving of this massive contract? And that's what I want to dive into today, really analyze the film of what he's bringing to this Giants team and why he will be a difference maker. Taking a look at the first play here, we're going to see one of Brian Burns' primary rush moves, and it says chop rip. We see the tackle, he's afraid of the speed rush here, so he's throwing that outside pillar arm to stop the momentum, to take the corner away. In response, Brian Burns is going to take his inside arm, chop that pillar arm down, and then dip and rip and bend his way around the corner to pick up a big-time strip sack. The ability to bend the corner with this elite get-off is no surprise. We've seen it since he came out of Florida State. But what's so impressive is how he's built an entire pass rush package off of this one rush move to complement his primary rush move. Once Brian Burns shows that speed rush, now he's going to work to his inside move here. You see, once again, he's going to throw the head, throw the hands, make everything look like it's that speed rush around the corner. This bait makes the tackle overextend, open his hips to try to run him out of the back of the pocket. But in all reality, all Brian Burns is doing here is setting up that inside rush move to jump back inside. Once again, picking up a big time quarterback hit here, forcing an errant throw. Again, the ability to go from outside to inside is always going to keep the tackle on their toes. Once again, we'll see on this next play here, Brian Burns shows the head, shows the speed rush, and now he's even bringing that inside arm like he's about to do the chop rip again. But in all reality, he's just setting this up for the sw spin move back inside, which results in another pressure and another incomplete pass. The ability for Brian Burns to complement his speed rush with his inside counter is going to leave any tackle guessing and on their toes with what to expect for, from Brian Burns. Because of this, we're going to see the next step and the next layer in his pass rush arsenal with this next play here. We see at the snap of the ball, the tackle here, he doesn't really know what he's getting. He doesn't know if he should throw that outside pillar. He doesn't know if he should bring his inside arm to protect from the speed rush. He doesn't know what to do here. And because of this, all this second guessing and hesitating has let him to have a poor base, poor strike, poor pad level, and now Brian Burns goes from speed to power. So now we've seen the speed rush, we've seen the inside counter, and now we've seen when he's got the tackle guessing, not knowing what to expect and what to throw, he's converting that speed into power, allowing himself to become a complete edge rusher in the NFL. A lot of times with these finesse edge rushers, you kind of get concerned for their ability to defend the run, but Brian Burns has done a really nice job to carry over his pass rush arsenal to his ability to get penetration in the run game. We've seen right there that cross chop and rip to get the TFL, that finesse, the ability to keep the offensive lineman's hands off of him, allows him to consistently play in the backfield against the run game. Once again, we see the tackle in this next play. He's going to overextend. He's going to lunge out just like in that pass protection when he throws both his hands with his head down with poor posture. What did Brian Burns do in the pass? rush he jumped back inside and once again in the run game he swims back inside to pick up another big time tfl on the run game there's no doubt about it there's a lot to like about brian burns he's a complete edge rusher whether it's the chop rip on third downs whether it's the chop rip to get a big time tfl he's a complete player that has been able to marry his pass rush game with his ability to defend the run as well as marry up counters off his primary rush move to really become the complete package now you add on top of that the relentless motor he has to chase people down from behind you can see why he's such a special player and why he was deserved to be paid so much. Again, we'll see on this next play another example of the athleticism here. We get the TE game with the tackle picking, and Brian Burns is looping back inside. And look how smooth that is for him to change directions. To jump inside without losing any momentum gives the guard absolutely no shot at redirecting to pick up the stunt. Now, there's no doubt about it. There are still some areas where Brian Burns can improve as a pass rusher and an edge player. And it's really common with all the finesse players to kind of struggle in this area. And it's the ability of how to respond once he is engaged with a blocker. Whether it's in, in the run game when a blocker gets his hands in his chest or if a tackle is patient and just kind of catches him and gets a hand on him, Brian Burns struggles to really respond to this by getting extension and shedding off a blocker. He kind of just falls off, and instead of picking up TFLs, he might allow a 3-4 yard gain in the run game. And as a pass rusher, he might get, get, get completely shut down if a tackle is patient and just catches him in his chest. By no means by saying he's a weak player, he doesn't have the power. We see consistently that he is able to turn speed into power and walk tackles into the into the back of the pocket, picking up sacks. Again, that's why I don't want to highlight the weakness too much because I don't think it's a big concern here. We see the speed to power. We see that the name of his game isn't to get engaged and get extension and shed blockers. It's about finesse. It's the twitchiness to avoid blockers, to not allow them to get hands on them so he can consistently play in the backfield. 
Overall, Brian Burns is a slippery edge rusher that bends extremely well around the corner that brings a complete pass rush arsenal to this New York Giants team. And now you're talking about pairing that kind of player up with Kayvon Thibodeau and Dexter Lawrence. You're seeing that the Giants have quietly put themselves together one of the best defensive lines in the NFL. Now you add on top of that the signings of John Runyon and Jermaine Lumor, two starting quality O-line players. Now you're really seeing that the core of this foundation of the, of the rebuild for the Giants is going from the trenches out. They're building up their defensive line, getting a high-level elite defensive line play, paired up with some quality starters off on the offensive line. You're really seeing they're going about the rebuild the correct way here, and they're quietly putting themselves together a scary team for possibly years to come. But let me know your guys' thoughts down below. Is Brian Burns worth the money? Are the Giants going to make the playoffs this year? Let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.